hello guys yeah welcome back to my channel and in this video as promised i'm going to use the change of coordinates method to solve the um, first order differential equation or partial differential equation of this form okay yes so um what i'm going to do here is that we already know that our vector here is the vector a b okay so the main idea here is we are trying to change the coordinates so the coordinate the original coordinate is x y the coordinate x y we want to change x or we want to change or we want to move from the x y coordinates to a new coordinate system okay so here what we are trying to do is that we are taking the vector a b or the a b as a very important direction and then by the relevance of that direction we are going to switch to a new coordinate system okay so um <coughs> we have this my original these are my original coordinate system x and y okay and this is whatever the new coordinate system i want to move into so normally this could this should have been the vector I was referring to and that's going to be the angle between the point uh, my A and then B here this is my AB and this angle is the angle between A and then or, or, or the projection on the x-axis and the actual vector okay yes now this same Phi is going to be here okay because we are shifting we are shifting from the x and y coordinates into a new set of coordinates now i'm going to call this axis the kasi or xi i don't know how they say it i, I usually use kasi kasi for that kasi axis and this is going to be my eta axis or my eta axis okay and then what i'm going to do is that my x over here just look at this my x over here is just going to be my cos uh, or x c <laughs> is it cos 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 phi minus eta or eta sine of phi okay and then my y becomes cos sine of phi plus eta cosine of phi don't be too worried about this now let me explain how i had this now this is my new axis right if i project them or if i project these two axes back on the x-axis this one falls on that i have a positive value and that is going to be kasi cos of phi right it's a projection of the kasi on x so that's going to be a positive value and when i do the same thing for for eta is going to be the eta sine of phi that is going to be the projection on the of the eta on the x axis but it is in the opposite direction so that's why i have that similarly if i project these two um axis or the eta and then the kasi axis on the y axis you are going to have this one projected this axis projected on the y axis is going to be c sine phi and that's going to be in the positive direction so that's why it's positive over here similarly when i project the eta axis on the y axis it's also going to be eta cos of phi and it is also going to be in the positive direction that is why i have these two um, um, um equations over here okay okay so now that i have this i can write this um as a, as a matrix or vectors and matrices i have x and y being equal to i can write the coefficients of c and eta into one matrix so cos phi negative sine phi sine phi eta oh sorry co cosine of phi 
and that is multiplying C eta. Okay? Yes. Now we are remember we are changing the code we are changing from the x y coordinate to the eta and cosi coordinate or cosi eta coordinate. So we want to make eta cosi the subject. So if that is going to happen here, we are going to have cosi eta being equal to um, the inverse of cosine of phi negative sine of phi sine of phi cosine of phi the inverse of that uh, then x y okay that's what we have now the inverse of this matrix I know by now we all know how to find the inverse of uh, the inverse of a matrix so that is going to be eta c being equal to cosine of phi if you do the algebra you're gonna have that sine phi negative sine phi and cosine of phi okay and that should be dotted with that okay or is it multiplying that now one thing I want you to know is that how can I write cosine of phi in terms of a and b so if this is phi cosine of phi is going to be the opposite oh cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse right so the adjacent is a the hypotenuse over here that is from here to here becomes the square root of a squared plus b squared so it means cosine of phi becomes a divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared similarly sine of phi becomes b divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared okay yes okay so one thing too we need to know about this is that um, let me try and expand this okay so we can see that C is equal to um, cosine x cosine of phi x cosine of phi s cosine of phi plus y sine of plus y the sine of phi right okay and then eta that is going to be equal to negative x sine of phi plus y cosine phi okay okay so now let's go back to the original problem we have a u x plus b u y so now I want to write u x and u y in terms of cosi and eta okay so u x is going to be it's going to be a chain rule so it's going to be del u del cosi multiplying del C uh, del x plus del u del eta multiplying del eta del x okay yes and this is going to be equal to you know the partial derivative of u with respect to C multiplying cosine cosine of phi plus the partial derivative of u with respect to eta multiplying the negative sine of phi and that is just u of you can see cos phi minus u eta sine phi okay yeah similarly you're going to have u y being equal to u can see sine phi plus u eta cosine of phi okay yes so let's replace or let's substitute this into the original equation and what let's see what we're gonna have so it's going to imply that my a u x plus b u y is going to be equal to let me write that down here so that uh, doesn't really have, have a um, multiplying 
ju kasi cosine of phi minus u eta sine phi then plus b plus b multiplying u c sine phi plus u eta cos phi and that should be equal to zero okay yeah so what is already we already know what um, cos phi is that's a divided by a uh, square root of a squared plus b squared and sine phi is the same as b divided by square root of a squared plus b squared so we have a multiplying u c multiplying a divided by square root of a squared plus b squared minus u eta b divided by square root of a squared plus b squared then plus b multiplying u eta multiplying um, b square root of a squared plus b squared plus u eta a divided by square root of a squared plus b squared that should be equal to zero so let's look at this a times a multiplying this is going to be the same as b multiplying that okay so i can say that this cancels that out okay they cancel out and i am left with u c multiplying um i'm going to have a squared plus b squared divided by a squared square root of a squared plus b squared and that should be equal to zero okay yes it's a bit rough but it's okay <laughs> okay so let's see what is happening here if you divide what's on top by what is what is you know when you divide the numerator by the denominator you're just going to have you can see multiplying the square root of a squared plus b squared equals zero if you're asking yourself why is this um you have just a squared plus b squared divided by you know a squared plus b squared all oh, to the power one out of two okay so the loss of indices allow you to subtract the exponents of the a squared plus b squared and that gives you a squared plus b squared all to the power half which happens to be the square root of that okay yes but what can we say about this root a squared plus b squared is never equal to zero unless a is equal to b is equal to zero okay so that is never equal to zero in this case a is not a is not zero and b is not zero so that is never going to be zero and if that is not zero th then it implies that u c is zero okay it implies that u c is zero and if u c is zero then it means that u u is going to be a function because we are trying to integrate let me let me do the integration so that it, it becomes simple we are integrating u c back to you know c integral zero del c and that should be u being equal to since we are integrating this we are integrating zero w anytime you integrate zero you have a constant but since this is a partial differential equation and we are integrating with respect to c it's going to be <coughs> sorry a function of eta right and then what is eta what is eta eta is just negative b x plus a y divided by a squared plus b squared the square root of that that's what eta is if you want to know why this is what eta is replace sine 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 phi with um you know b divided by square root of a squared plus b squared and replace cos phi 2 by a divided by square root of a squared plus b squared and that should simplify to that okay 
now since eta is equal to this right it means that my u is equal to f of negative oh sorry this negative is for just b so oh shoot let me make this one so this is going to be minus b x plus a y divided by square root of a squared plus b squared okay and this is supposed to be a constant okay and if that is a constant it doesn't matter we can just get rid of the square root of you know a squared plus b squared because it's just a constant and we're going to have u being equal to f of a y minus b x which happens to be the solution to this first order differential equation this is a long way or this is, i know this 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 is a bit rough you don't need to understand you don't really need to have all these things in your in your head but you have to know what is going on right what's going on behind the scenes that you can use the geometric approach to solve this specific type of first order diff partial differential equation and you can also use the coordinate method to do that and this is what we have so in our next video we are going to pick the transport equation and knowing this we wouldn't have to go through a long process to solve the transport equation but we will just apply this and then we will have the solution to the um, transport equation okay yes so please leave a like on the video and turn on post notification and see you in the next video bye bye